Hello. My prayers are with the friends and family of Crystal Dehan today and always as we celebrate her life and legacy. Crystal dedicated her life toward changing the lives of countless young people across the world. She showed us the human impact that one woman can have through service to others. After emigrating from Germany to the United States, Crystal achieved business accomplishments unsurpassed in the travel and tourism industry. But through it all, Crystal's success was always rooted in her kindness, friendship, and generosity. In the short time that we knew each other, we bonded over the hope that our work will leave future generations with a more just, equitable, brighter world than the one we entered. Crystal's memory is a reminder that we all share this responsibility together. She will truly be missed. Janet and I were deeply saddened when we learned that Crystal DeHaan, a global gift to humanity, had passed. She was a dear friend and we were eternally blessed to have gotten to know her over the years. She was so driven and possessed infinite talent and energy and measured her success only by the lives that she touched. And she touched so many lives from right here at home to the other side of the earth at their home. With Crystal, she was always so poised. What she did seemed so effortless and at the same time selfless, extending these incredible opportunities to the most impoverished children of the world and these children who she had never met. She was just so passionate and compassionate and devoted to serving others and proud of what others were able to accomplish when they were properly equipped. She was the very definition of what it means to me to be a true Hoosier. And her example inspires me every single day. And her legacy will live on and her light will shine on forever and ever. I send you all my heartfelt condolences and join you in honoring the memory of our Crystal DeHaan. This is Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett. In these difficult times, it is so important that we take time to appreciate the life of a truly good and gifted person. For it is through her example that we can find the tools to transcend any challenge. Crystal DeHaan blazed a trail in the city of Indianapolis. Actually, several trails. After amassing wealth as a business leader in our city, she dedicated the final third of her life to philanthropy and education. She once said of Crystal House International that her goal was not to create profit or market capital, but human capital. Over 20 years later, tens of thousands of people have benefited from that goal. And thanks to Crystal's solid business background, she has set up the Crystal House International to touch the lives of future generations. But of course, there was more to Crystal than her pursuits in business and philanthropy. Nobody knows this side better than the family she leaves behind. My condolence to them in their loss. We can surely take comfort, however, in the knowledge that Crystal accomplished everything she set out to do. Not only that, but she leaves behind a legacy that will continue her critical work around education for many years to come. Indianapolis got lucky when Crystal decided to make her home here all those years ago. Today, our city, and indeed, to those around the world whose lives she's touched, we can all reflect on the transformative and instructive life of Crystal DeHaan. Well, I'm Pete Buttigieg, and I'm thankful for this opportunity to share a word of admiration as we pause and celebrate the memory of Crystal DeHaan. Crystal was a prime example of the American dream, uh, somebody who built a successful business and a wonderful life, and also worked tirelessly to support and guide and serve others along the way, especially through Crystal House International, which was a blessing to so many and helped thousands of children, uh, as well as the many other important causes uh, and charitable organizations that she cared about. It was always a pleasure to be invited to join her over dinner, knowing that she would assemble a fascinating group of people. And she always thought it was important to come armed with interesting topics to discuss. 
She had a wonderful mixture of insight and curiosity, uh, full of ideas, but never too proud to lead by asking what others thought. And at a time like this, I think that her advocacy and generosity and, and her spirit are certainly going to be missed. Uh, we'll miss her engaging character and, and wit and the pleasure of her company. But also, of course, all of that lives on. And her passion for helping others, her work and her legacy are going to continue and continue to make an impact on all of us whose lives she touched. Hello, my name is Rob Manuel and I'm the president at the University of Indianapolis. I've always been in awe of how Crystal occupied various stages in her world. She danced between international, national, and local communities, inspiring their members to engage in the most pressing questions of our day. Locally, Crystal's fingerprints are on just about every aspect of our life in Indianapolis. She created long-lasting opportunities for the members of our community to enjoy the arts, earn an education, engage each other in civil discourse and debate, and think about how we should all be responsible for increasing the quality of life for those around us. Every time I walk across the UND campus, I see the physical changes that she inspired. But more importantly, I see the opportunities that her ideas give to every student that studies with us. I see how art and performance is now central to everybody's experience, how targeted research informs practice, and how encouraging diversity in debate challenges us all to be global citizens. Crystal challenged us to develop ourselves, to learn how to fight against the forces of mediocrity, and required us to use our skills and abilities to benefit others. This is the legacy that she leaves for us. I feel charged by her example to be engaged in the world around us and use our privilege to help others. That's her lasting gift and it's sewn into the education we offer at UIndy, and I think in the work done around the world. Like many of you, uh, my relationship with Crystal was a very special one. This special relationship and our incipient friendship started in the early 80s. She was doing sales calls in her early RCI years to affiliate a prestigious Mexican project that I was working with, a resort development called Maeva. She needed to affiliate our project to give an international traction to the expansion of RCI. Long story short, I turned her down, but that was the beginning of a very special friendship. Bristol was persistent. In the end, she didn't only affiliate Maeva to RCI, but she had the courage to hire me. 40 years later, we remain very close friends. After she sold RCI, I introduced her to a nun that was in charge of poor orphans and abandoned kids. I asked Chris for a check to help her. And she came back not only with a check, but with a new mission in her life transform the lives of poor and disadvantaged kids through education. Crystal House was born, and that was Crystal, a transformer of lives. In more than one way, she transformed everybody and everything she touched. She was resilient, persistent, hungry for knowledge. She was opinionated, and God knows she was opinionated. Several times we didn't agree, but she was also reflective and had tons and tons of business common sense. Her departure is a great loss for me and for many people around the world. I will miss our discussions, our traveling, our laughs. Goodbye for now, Crystal, until we meet again. Hello. This is Congressman Andre Carson. It is with a heavy heart, but also with great honor, that I pay tribute to Crystal DeHaan and her lifetime of service to others. I want to also send my deepest sympathy to her loved ones. Crystal DeHaan lived the American dream and achieved success beyond most people's wildest imagination, a testament to her brilliance and tireless work ethic. However, she understood that this success meant nothing if she didn't use it to provide opportunities for others. This passionate commitment to community in Indiana and around the world is how she will best be remembered. 
Her life is a lesson to all of us, and her values will continue to guide our efforts to make the world a better, safer, and more compassionate place. We can't waste a moment on this endeavor, so let's keep up the important work of building her amazing legacy. To Crystal, we love you, we miss you, we honor you, but most importantly, we thank you. My fellow mourners, my name is David Hittner, and I am the mayor of Crystal de Haan's hometown, Nördlingen, in Bavaria, Germany. The city of Nördlingen mourns the loss of Crystal de Haan, and I would like to express my deepest condolences to all of her relatives and friends. On behalf of the citizens of Nördlingen and the city council. With her death, the city of Nördlingen has lost a longtime friend and patron. Christel de Haan was born in Nördlingen and has kept in touch with her hometown throughout her whole life. Traveling around the world as a successful businesswoman, her birthplace always remained close to her heart. And whenever she could, she came back to visit Nördlingen. Christel de Haan generously supported the social and cultural life of our city. She was particularly fond of our boys band Knabenkapelle, enjoying the boys performing in their 17th century uniforms. The Christel de Haan social prize donated by her will be remembered far beyond her death. Christel de Haan was an extraordinary person and a great daughter of Nördlingen. She never forgot her roots. She will be remembered as modest, humorous and dedicated to other people. She will live on in our hearts through her deeds and care for the weak. In this way, she will always be an inspiration for all of us, even after her death. We say farewell to Crystal de Haan and reflect on her many contributions. May she rest in peace. I moved to Indianapolis in 2011. In only my first month at the Arts Council of Indianapolis, I heard a ton of great things about this remarkable businesswoman and philanthropist named Crystal DeHaan. When I finally met her, well, she exceeded the hype. And especially when I learned that she also had this passion for inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. During my brief time here, I've had the chance to meet and chat with her about a dozen times. And I, while I never had the chance to become a friend, I did quickly become an enthusiastic fan. Yes, arts leaders adore her, as do other arts patrons, but what stood out for me was how she listened to artists and to students, and how she supported them in pushing the boundaries of their practices and their studies, and for what they even imagined were possible. The last time that I chatted with Crystal was when she visited Gallery 924 at the Arts Council of Indianapolis to meet with the five artists in the Dahan Artist of Distinction Award exhibition. She came to look at their contemporary art, to listen to their creative ideas, and to learn. I think it is this mastery of listening and learning that made her such a grand champion for us. And I wish she was here with us now. We miss her. Ever since I was young, I've had an acute awareness that life is short in the context of the universe and eternity and that we only get one shot at it, and that we ought to do something profoundly important with that one shot. I can't think of anybody who's done more with their one shot than Crystal DeHaan. Now we all know Crystal's list of accomplishments, but beyond that stunning list is the way that Crystal used her time. She didn't waste any of it. That gave her the opportunity to work at a superhuman pace, to go beyond the limits of human endurance, but also to live a joyful life filled with a countless number of close personal relationships. And in achieving her dreams, Crystal gave many, many thousands of others the opportunity to achieve theirs. Can you think of a better way to use your one shot on this earth? Goodbye, Crystal, and thank you.
I met Crystal DeHaan before I ever came to the American Pianist Association. She was actually the chair of the board when I was hired as the artistic director. As it turns out, she was chair of the board again a number of years later when I became the president and chief executive officer. Her contributions and her leadership style have made such an incredible difference over the decades at APA. I'm extremely grateful for all that she's done, not just for me and APA, but for all of the pianists that we support. She's also been a great personal friend, mentor, and confidant. I really miss her terribly. But the role she's played, the inspiration that she has given me will last me for the rest of my life. Thank you so much, Crystal, for all you've done. You made APA in Indy home for me. Hello, I'm James Johnson, CEO of the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. Thank you for the invitation to speak about a dear friend of the ISO. I was fortunate to meet Crystal DeHaan early in my tenure. Knowing of her business acumen, I expected questions about the financial well-being of the ISO. I did not expect her to have studied our income statement and balance sheet, but then I'm not the first person to have made that mistake. Crystal knew better than most the challenges facing nonprofit organizations. She expected us to be good stewards of the resources entrusted in us. She wanted to be certain that we acted with integrity, that we stayed true to our artistic principles, that we collaborated with other organizations, and that we embraced the larger community. At the ISO, she was a major benefactor, underwriting the opening night gala for 30 years and supporting numerous initiatives. Crystal DeHaan understood the capacity of the arts to change lives. I am certain that her own life was utterly transformed by music. During concerts, I often witnessed expressions of pure joy on her face. Afterward, she wanted to meet and spend time with the performers. For these artists, Crystal DeHaan was heaven sent. She understood music and had impeccable taste in wine. In bygone days, post-concert dinners had a way of stretching to sunrise. It is no surprise that Crystal formed lasting friendships with our conductors and musicians. Speaking on their behalf and for all associated with the ISO, I express sorrow at her passing and gratitude for knowing this shining beacon of light in our community. I first met Crystal in 1995 uh, when we were premiering our production of Carmina Burana. She came to the performance and brought 16 people with her. And at intermission, she came out to the front of the house and said to our managing director at the time, come to my office tomorrow. I want to start supporting you. So of course, uh, he and I went up to meet Crystal the following day and uh, it was quite an incredible experience for me. Uh, at that point, her offices were uh, up at the pyramids and um, I was so impressed with all of the art that was in her office and totally uh, overwhelmed by her. She was such a, an incredibly charming woman, uh, so smart and so uh, poised. And she started supporting us from that point onwards. Um, our relationship grew over the years um, she became a very trusted friend. Uh, she advised us a lot about uh, how we should conduct our affairs. I remember once um, a board president uh, and myself went to her offices and she said, you know, um, it's very important for you all to have a strategic plan. And I said, what's that? <laughs> so that was the first time I ever heard of that. And um, she did things like that that, was, that were really, really fantastic for us for the company and for me, myself. Um, she gave me at that point um, a much needed boost. I was at a, a wonderfully uh, uh, doubtful stage of my career where I was doubting whether I could accomplish what I wanted to do here in Indianapolis. And she gave me the strength and the fortitude and the belief in myself that I could achieve it. And so for that, uh, I'm extremely grateful and I will never, ever, ever forget what she has given to us, um, both to me personally and to the company. My favorite um, memory of her is um, after one of our performances of Piaf, 
which uh, we had premiered at the uh, Indie Fringe Festival. She and her sister Evelyn came and attended and afterwards they were sitting in a restaurant having dinner and drinks and invited me uh, to come and join them. And she was so uh, bubbling and excited and thrilled and she said to me, you know David, um, this piece uh, brought back so many great memories for us because we sang these songs um, as teenagers when we were growing up. We knew the lyrics to every single song and we sang along. And um, that gave me a great deal of joy to see how much joy it gave to her. So um, what I'd like to say is, Crystal, thank you so much for all that you've given us. Um, I have to tell you that by your example, you showed me and you inspired me how to become a better human being. I was very proud to be asked to say a few words about Crystal Lahan today. One of the best things about my job as president and CEO of the Central Indiana Community Foundation is I get to meet extraordinary people and if I'm lucky, created a relationship with them. Certainly Crystal was among the top of that list. I knew Crystal as a visionary, a donor, a foundation, a not-for-profit colleague, and a friend. She created endowments for arts organizations at CICF and also supported our community leadership initiatives. When I think about the great opportunities I've had in my career and my life, many of them were at the invitation of Crystal, meeting Bishop Desmond Tutu, having dinner at Woodstock with Crystal to hear about the vision and progress of the Crystal Health Schools around the world. And a few times being fortunate enough to be invited to her beautiful home for one of the lovely evenings of her salons. These are memories I will always cherish. Of course, we all knew Crystal as an amazing businesswoman, philanthropist, donor, role model, mentor. I miss her already. And even though she left an incredible and thoughtful legacy for Indianapolis and the world, our city also misses her very dearly. The Indianapolis Zoo, our community and our world are a better place because of Crystal DeHaan. Her strategic philanthropy was responsible for helping to create this beautiful White River Garden that I'm sitting in right now. Her generosity was responsible for the Dahan Tear Garden. Crystal understood that gardens, nature, and the natural world uplift people and uplift our community, and we're forever grateful for her vision. Crystal was a champion for wildlife conservation, and she was a founding supporter of the Indianapolis Prize, the world's leading award for animal conservation. I have one especially fond memory of Crystal. I spent an afternoon uh, here at the zoo with her and her grandson uh, when we were welcoming uh, a new orangutan uh, named Siri. Uh, Siri uh, was an adult female who had come from the Frankfurt Zoo in Germany. And um, uh, orangutans, like all great apes, understand spoken language, but only the language that they grow up around. Generously, uh, Crystal offered to come in and spend some time visiting Siri and speaking to her in German. Uh, and it was a wonderful thing for me to experience as I watched her uh, approach Siri and greet her in German and speak to her in German. Uh, and it was so clear uh, that Siri immediately recognized it and understood it and appreciated it. What a thoughtful thing for Crystal to do uh, on behalf of one of our orangutans. Since then, I'm so happy to report that Siri not only understands plenty of English now, um, she's also become a mom, and she has a four-year-old daughter named Mila. Crystal was gracious, she was kind, and she was compassionate. And the simplest and best thing to say is that she made the world a much better place for future generations. We're forever grateful. Crystal DeHaan had a tremendous influence on me and on the cabaret. 
We shared a deep love of the cabaret art form and her longtime support was instrumental in bringing world-class cabaret to local audiences. She spearheaded the lead gift of the organization's endowment, setting a course for sustainability. I've led the cabaret now for 11 years and Crystal also shaped my leadership. She was a mentor to many, many arts leaders. She had high expectations and charged us to strive for excellence with a commitment to quality and constantly raising the bar. Crystal also had a depth of generosity, not just of financial resources, but also of spirit. One of my earliest memories of Crystal was as a performer at American Cabaret Theater when I received an unexpected holiday bonus along with other cabaret performers. She knew that as performers, we didn't make much money and that uh, that bonus made such a difference. Fast forward to just two years ago, and her foundation provided a transformational gift to the cabaret, enabling us to design and build a world-class venue that international artists have compared to their favorite cabarets in Berlin. I also love it that Crystal, like me, enjoyed a little bit of lowbrow in a cabaret, as well as the highbrow. I will deeply miss her presence in my life, and in our audience, especially at our Crystal DeHaan International Series performances, showcasing international cabaret artists that she was instrumental in bringing to our stage. We will honor her legacy by continuing to elevate the cabaret art form that she truly loved. First and last, Crystal DeHaan was my friend. She shared her table, her love of music and ideas. She shared her friends and her endless curiosity with me and with my husband, Matt Gutwein. I don't think anything about Crystal was idle, but definitely not her curiosity. She sought to understand the world and her fellow human beings. And as she endeavored to best use her own gifts and talents, for the greater good, she sought to equip others to best use their gifts and their abilities to make the world a better place. My privilege in helping her in just one little corner of her ambitious pursuit began when she called me early in the fight for marriage equality. Crystal asked tough questions. She gave generously. She stood up for what she believed to be right. And with her example, she encouraged others to do the same. Crystal became an ally in the ACLU's work to hold government accountable to the promises and potential of our American constitution. She believed that everyone deserved a life of liberty and dignity. And that belief animated so much of her work, including her work with us defending the rights of women, of LGBTQ people, of immigrants. I will miss Crystal as an ally, but most acutely, I will miss her as a friend. Hello, I'm Jason Gamble, President and CEO of the America Resort Development Association. I first want to offer my sincerest condolences to Crystal's family, friends, and all those who knew and loved her. It's very difficult under the best of circumstances to grieve a loss like this, so I can only imagine what they're all going through today. It is impossible to overstate the enormity of Crystal's impact on the timeshare industry. When she co-founded RCI, little did she know she was about to introduce an essential ingredient for the industry's continued success. In recognition of her time at RCI and beyond, Crystal received both the Art at ACE Lifetime Achievement Award as well as the ACE Philanthropic Award. As for that philanthropic work, again, Crystal expanded our horizons, and today, more than ever, the industry continues to support and celebrate Crystal House across the globe. We will remember Crystal as a mentor for living powerfully and giving generously. As a person of relentless compassion, a woman with a limited vision for creating good in the world. To say that we will miss her will be an understatement, because we will be surrounded by the legacy of Crystal DeHaan, for the rest of our lives. I met Crystal De Han in 2011 at Estela and Gabriel Oropesa's home in Mexico City. It was an amazing encounter, the first one of several we had since I got on board at Crystal House. I was captivated by her culture, spirit, and passion. I'm so grateful 
with her and with God for having the opportunity to share this time, space and mission of giving a seat at the table of life to all of our kids. Crystal was a great mentor. I've always found in her a great and wise human being, ready to help and to guide, but mainly to push us to do the best for our kids, which was her great passion. There are a lot of phrases she said, some are slogans of our organization, but there are two of her daily repertory that I love. The first one, we are used to get the ball out of the park. She loved using it when we were setting goals as she always impelled us to cross boundaries. The other she said always when we were saying our goodbyes on our monthly Skypes was, keep the good work, Javier. Dear Crystal, thank you for all what you did for the Mexican kids and all around the world since 1998 when you opened the first Crystal House in Mexico. Thank you for giving us the most important lesson, to care, to share, and to make the difference for everyone and everywhere. Count on that we will continue the good work and getting the ball out of the park. We love you and God bless you. Hello, um, my name is Professor Shira West. I'm the President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Nottingham. On behalf of the University, I wish to pay my respects to Crystal. I didn't meet Crystal personally, but I know that she had a very warm relationship with Ron Haylock, who was one of our council members, and our then Vice Chancellor, Sir Colin Campbell. She visited our campus back in 2003, and that led to an invitation to visit our new campus in Ningbo, China. And there she gave a keynote lecture, further cementing the friendship and warmth of our relationship. We were so sorry to hear of her passing and send our deepest sympathies to all of her family and friends. I know that Crystal has transformed lives through her dedication to Crystal House and her passion for education, empowering and raising aspirations from so many. Removing barriers to education and social mobility are deeply embedded in our mission at the University of Nottingham. And these are values that we shared with Crystal. What an incredible legacy and inspiration for us all. I'm Spence Wilson, Chairman of Holiday Inn Club Vacations. And I'm very glad to have an opportunity to share a few thoughts about Crystal, who was a good friend. I have enormous appreciation for her contributions in two special ways. First, as the founder and operator of RCI, a wonderful institution that has uh, changed uh, the way Timeshare works and made it so successful in its earliest days. And most importantly, and even more importantly perhaps, for her creative uh, instincts and her drive to help others uh, with the creation of Crystal House, which has provided enormous help and support to people deep in poverty uh, throughout the world, young people and their families. Crystal had many, many fine qualities that helped her be so successful in business, and she coupled those with her passion for helping others, and that makes Crystal House one of the most successful institutions, organizations that I know of. It's changing lives everywhere, not only here in our United States, but in several places throughout the world. I'm so thankful that Crystal was a good friend. She made a great difference in her time here on this earth, and I'm just glad that I knew her. What is remarkable to me about Crystal is that she could have done anything in her golden years. She could have traveled the world. She could have taken up um, exotic hobbies and she chose education and she chose kids and she made an incredible difference in thousands of people's lives. And that is what is most remarkable about Crystal Lahan is the choices that she made to impact others and to make a difference that was much, much larger than 
an economic one for herself. When Crystal joined the board of Splenda Festival USA in 2002, she knew that the festival had been through a bit of a rough patch, upheavals including um, resignation of half the board of directors, the loss of the founding artistic director, um, the resignation of uh, three general managers, um, the, uh, a deficit that amounted to almost the uh, same level as the annual budget. It was not a pretty picture. Uh, most of the new board members at that time had a very strong connection to Charleston. She did not, but she loved a challenge. Um, I thought I was gaining a board member who would be fascinated by the operas that we were putting on, the concerts, the other performances that you know a lot about them. Uh, in fact, I was gaining a board member who had strong opinions and uh, was not afraid to express them. Uh, she, uh, at a board meeting, she would uh, really quiz me on our future plans if we were not explicit about how we were budgeting, how we were forecasting, how we were planning for the future. Uh, I knew that every time I would go to a board meeting, she would have questions that would really put me on the spot in a, in a gracious way, in a friendly way, but in a pointed way as well. Uh, she was, however, also wonderfully supportive. Uh, during her time on the board, she helped us uh, create an endowment, uh, renovate two theaters, and really stabilize the festival. Uh, I was very disappointed when Crystal decided that other commitments were forcing her to uh, uh, not uh, take another term on the board of uh, the festival. She uh, had stepped down as a board member, but she continued to stay as a audience member. She would come with a whirlwind schedule, uh, seeing three or four performances a day and bringing half of uh, Indianapolis with her. Uh, she had been a perfect board member. Um, she became the perfect audience member. All I can say is thank you again, Crystal. Uh, you left Spoleto Festival USA a better place. You left the world a better place. It was a little over 20 years ago that I first met Crystal DeHaan, and at first we were talking about Crystal House and the Art International Foundation, which she so generously endowed. And after about a year of meeting, uh, and we really liked each other, Crystal said to me, I think it's obvious that we want to be friends, but we need to nurture that. So let's spend time together. That's not about Crystal House, and that's not about Arda. And that's when our real friendship began. And I can remember a wonderful trip we took with Crystal and Ron Haylock to uh, Italy. And there in Italy, I learned about the history of RCI and, I, and her success, and also how she was going to de dedicate the rest of her life to helping children throughout the world lift themselves from poverty. She believed in Maimonides' philosophy, the 12th century philosopher who said, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach him how to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. And as a teacher, I agree with the transformative power of teaching. But our connection was beyond travel and Crystal House and Arda and teaching. It was about art and music and politics and, mm. and making friends. So many joyful memories. I, I know the best way to continue to honor Crystal is to keep her vision alive by supporting Crystal House, whether that's through volunteering or raising money. I also know that I'll never be able to pick up a glass of champagne again without thinking of my dear friend Crystal and her love of shampoozy, her love of life. And for that I say, to you Crystal DeHaan, to Crystal. Nelson Mandela once said, just like apartheid, poverty is man-made and can be eradicated by the actions of humans. He also said, that education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. Ms. Crystal combined these two profound thoughts and turned it into action through a wonderful mission, not only in South Africa, but around the world. I have had the privilege to work with her for the past 18 years, and she has been an amazing leader who has taught us how to combine hard work with compassion and deliver the best quality education to our children. Ms. Crystal's legacy will remain on not only in the children who are currently at Crystal House, but also through the graduates who have come through the school. I am eternally grateful 
for all that she has done for us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve Holmes. I'm the chairman of Wyndham Destinations as well as Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. And it is my absolute honor and privilege to spend a moment talking about this remarkable woman. In 1996, when I was with a company called HFS, we went out to Indianapolis to learn about this company called RCI. We were looking to expand our hospitality portfolio of companies. In RCI, we met Crystal DeHaan. And Crystal spoke to us about the company, how she started it, where it was going, and the fact that she didn't know that she was the right person to take it to the next level, that maybe another company would be better growing it to the next level. And of course, in typical in crystal fashion, she spoke a lot about the people, what she called her RCIers. Um, after several more trips out to Indianapolis, some intense grilling from Crystal about my values and how we were gonna manage the business, uh, we cut a deal to buy RCI. But what happened next is what is absolutely extraordinary. I've been involved in the acquisition of hundreds of companies, many of them from founders. And usually what happens is the founder buys a plane, a boat, one guy bought a luxury mobile home to travel around the US. Uh, they, they, they do things for themselves, not Crystal. She went and she created Crystal House within two years of our acquisition of RCI. And my the thrill I had of watching Crystal Build and then grow Crystal House is something that will stay with me for the rest of my life. The way she interacted with the kids, the way they, they, they shared mutual love and respect was genuine, was heartfelt, and, and it just it put a smile on your face. And then when she would get in a room and start talking about the successes that her uh, Crystal House children were having, whether it was graduation rates, acceptance into college, going on to graduate school, other successes in their lives. It was just, it was just heartwarming. We go through life, we meet a lot of people, but for those people who had a chance to cross paths with Crystal DeHaan, their lives were better for it. Thank you. My name is Sally Porteous and I'm the CEO of Crystal House Jamaica. And on behalf of Team Jamaica, I'd like to express my deep condolences to the family of Crystal DeHaan. I met Crystal some 25 years ago in Indianapolis when I was in the film industry and we became quite good friends. We used to ride bicycles together. I went to her house and she cooked some wonderful dinners for me and we used to chat about everything on earth. And I have to say that this gift of this school for Jamaica especially where it is going, which is in the community of Spanish town, in an area where there are so many impoverished children and where the unemployment rate is very high, the crime rate is very high, and really the kids that come from there have very little hope of progress in their lives. So I want to not only express my sadness at her passing, but also to thank her and Crystal House International for bringing this wonderful school to Jamaica. May God bless you all. Hi everyone, this is Drew Peterson. It gives me great pleasure to join in the celebration of Crystal DeHaan's life and legacy, an incredible human being. Hi, my name is Jesus Morales. I am a graduate from Crystal House, Mexico. I first attended Crystal House when I was six years old and I continue attending until I graduated from ninth grade. That changed my life completely. During that time, I had the opportunity to understand that values are a fundamental part of the essence of a good human being. With the help of Crystal House, I was able to assume respect, responsibility, integrity and independence as a pathway in my life. These values became a fundamental pillar in my perspective on life. In Crystal de Han, I found an example of success. I like to think of success in terms of the positive impact we can make on the people around us. She dedicated her life to transforming this world into a better place. Through Crystal House, she provided the opportunity for students around the world and their families to improve their quality of life. On my last years of middle school, I had the opportunity to attend Culver Summer Camp in Indiana where I also met more students from Crystal House India and South Africa. 
Immediately, we felt a bond of brotherhood. During the summer, Crystal Dehan visited us in Culver to meet us and to share an extraordinary afternoon with all the Crystal House students who attended summer camp that year. This photograph is one of my favorites. It is a reminder that in the world there are people full of light who give us hope and their example to be better human beings. I firmly believe that we can all continue her legacy in our community, and thus, little by little, leave this world a little better than we found it. I am very honored to speak today about Crystal Dahan. I started at Crystal House nearly 16 years ago where I heard about Crystal and I heard about people speaking about her with great respect, certainly an amazing and outstanding person. My very first experience of her was, I remember thinking she was such an, in, an excitable person with a heart for those who are in desperate situations. She was certainly a person whom I was in touch with on an emotional level. Crystal didn't just want to feed the poor for the for a day as per her philanthropic philosophy of giving a man a fish for a day she truly lived the life of teaching the poor to fish the page out of her life which i will take is to be involved and innovative in searching for solutions for the poor crystal became involved in this project which is crystal house by being present and hands-on. I admire this about her. Crystal certainly taught me about living a life for others. True compassion comes from this attitude, which goes beyond just being sympathetic to people's plight, but actually to give a little of yourself. As we say, as we now commemorate this true hero, with Crystal Dawn, I can only but wish to be a little like her, the kind of person who turns heads, the presence which comes with her own magic. Crystal always spoke about the magic source in Crystal House. She said at one stage, we should try and find out what makes Crystal House South Africa such a magical place. You could never really pinpoint what that magic source was. Today, I can only say without doubt that we actually knew Crystal herself was that magic source. She could liven up any engagement. She could certainly bring class and value to every encounter. Crystal Dawn, today I salute you. You are indeed a person for all seasons. One who knew the value of giving back. You were the living embodiment of caring, sharing, and make a difference. I thank you for all that you've done for Crystal House South Africa, and certainly for me. Without music, my life would be a desert. Crystal said those words to me quite a few times. Without music, my life would be a desert too. Music is what brought Crystal and me to a dinner table in 1999, but many other things kept us close. I was an overnight guest at her homes more times than I can count. For me, the greatest privilege of her friendship were our breakfasts, our lunches and suppers, just us two, sometimes in pajamas, talking about all kinds of things women discuss ex-husbands, waning energy, especially in the face of more medical treatments, my retirement activities, and even money. I know that sounds weird. I'm an artist who made an artist's living. Nothing even worth discussing with the likes of Crystal Dahan. And yet she did listen 
and she gave me great advice. The smiles from her were best, though, when I told her how much I love my retirement work as a volunteer, my time teaching English as a new language, and my work with the Refugee Support Network. Her smiles of approval meant the world to me. Crystal got me. She fully understood the life I had as an international performer, but she also understood the powerful desire to give back, to pay forward, because that was her life and her mission. I'll miss all that great food, the stimulating conversations, the shared experiences, the encouragement, no, the demand to aim high. Crystal lifted me out of the ordinary, and I love her for it. Today, we honor Crystal DeHaan, who has left an enormous legacy and transformed the lives of thousands of people, many who have had the opportunity to meet her, and many, many more who never had that privilege. The amazing thing about Crystal's legacy is the breadth of her global influence. Through her caring and generous acts, she left a roadmap of sustainability and hope throughout the world. People of all ages, ethnicities, education, and social backgrounds were the beneficiaries of Crystal DeHaan's selfless philanthropy. Through her generosity to the International Violin Competition of Indianapolis alone, global citizens were able to watch live broadcasts of the quadrennial competition. She also made it possible for Hoosier children to meet the young artists through cultural exchange education programs that were up close and personal. The world of violinists as a whole owes a debt of gratitude to Crystal for making it possible for the competition to commission some of the world's most illustrious composers and now those works have become part of the standard violin literature. First and foremost, we pay tribute to and thank Crystal for her dedication to excellence in everything that she touched, truly leaving an international legacy of goodwill for generations to come. I had the opportunity of working with Crystal for 19 years. It has been both a privilege and an absolute honor for me. Crystal was an inspirational leader, a great humanitarian, and a visionary in every sense. She created two great organizations in one lifetime and transformed the lives of several thousands of people around the world. I had the incredible opportunity to witness and to be part of the resounding transformative impact her work created in India. Her exemplary leadership is the reason for Crystal House's success today. Her underlying spirit for pushing boundaries, setting high standards and expectations are a few things that I learned from Crystal over the years. In celebration of Crystal's life, I would say, here was a life that exemplified brilliance, a life that inspired emulation, a life that lit many paths and will serve as a beacon to many more who long for a seat at the table of life. On behalf of Crystal House India Board, staff, students and their families, my respectful homage to Crystal's family and the Crystal House supporters worldwide. We have the responsibility to build upon and carry forward her vision and legacy by transforming the lives of many millions. A life that touches others goes on forever. Thank you. Hi, my name is Montanique Mitchell and I'm an alumni of Crystal House Doors South. Before the title alumni, I held titles such as felon and failure. But Crystal Dehan wasn't only a philanthropist, she was a mother, a mentor. She positively impacted so many lives, and this is an amazing and honorable thing. Her genius devised a plan that impacted the minds and motivated progress, invoking positive change in the community, one person at a time, not limited to children, teens, nor adults, but all inclusive bestowing knowledge and adversity and love and everything that she came in contact with. Anyone that knew her endeavors knew she had a heart of gold. She truly was one of a kind. Her program is unique and with the Doris family by my side, I know failure is not an option. 
So again, um, I want to say that it was an honor to know her and uh, come in contact with her. And today we celebrate a life of truly a remarkable person. My name is Vara Lakshmi and I'm a student of grade 12 studying in Crystal House, India. My dream has always been that one day I would grow up to be like Miss Crystal Dehan. I remember as a little girl studying in Crystal House, India, my friends and I used to wait for February because that's when Crystal Ma'am visited us. We used to be most excited and make cards for her and plan what we would tell her when she came to our class. I remember her warmly hugging all the children who gathered around her. All of us felt her love and deep care that was really comforting since we had so many problems in our lives. My father expired when I was very young and my mother struggled a lot to bring us up. When I was in grade 9, my mother passed away. I have a sister but she had her own troubles and could not take care of me. None of my relatives wanted to take on any responsibility. That is when I truly felt the nurturing care and support of Crystal House. I will forever be grateful to Crystal Ma'am for giving us Crystal House India. I graduate from school this year. My friends and I at Crystal House owe everything to Crystal Ma'am, our education, health and all the values that we have been grown up with. Crystal Ma'am, we miss you terribly and we promise that we will be the ambassadors of your vision for Crystal House. Thank you. Crystal, today I'm going to honor you because it's about you. Not many people can claim the honor of having the financial and business success that you have. And fewer of them can claim the opportunity to have started this financially sustainable social transformation vehicle. You did both. You changed the world economy and you provided so many opportunities to so many people. Many of them built personal wealth and they themselves could send their kids to good schools and they could pay the privilege forward in so many ways. And I have witnessed that so many times. This is quite amazing. In Crystal House, you did exactly the same. You used your compassionate heart, your business acumen and your personal wealth. And you dug it, you roll up your sleeves and you did the work long since after you didn't need to. Your grit, your determination just saw you push through. That was such a tremendous inspiration to me, to all of us, actually. I'm blessed to have worked closely with you for almost two years and to experience how you blend precision and compassion to build the successful model that you have. What a powerful source for change. Crystal, thank you from all of us. And thank you for what you've been for, to me and the world. The time is now to rest, knowing that you are leaving your legacy in competent and passionate hands. From us here in South Africa, your work will continue forever. My friends, on behalf of the entire Asante Children's Theatre family, we pause to remember Crystal Dahan and her tremendous legacy of leadership and care. Her life is a true testament of the words of Simone de Beauvoir, who said one's life has value so long as one attributes value to the lives of others by means of love, friendship, indignation, and compassion. Her warmth, agency, and generosity of spirit was an inspiration to us all. Having Crystal Dehan and the Dehan Family Foundation as part of our network of support, enabled Asante to thrive in our mission to transform lives through performing arts. And so we extend our heartfelt condolences to the family. The world has lost a great humanitarian, businesswoman, and philanthropist. Asante has lost a true champion, advocate, and sage. May her spirit soar and dance amongst the constellations. And may we all be inspired 
by her light and life. Hello, I'm Vimal Raj. I graduated from Crystal House India in the year 2012. I joined Crystal House when I was in grade 4. From then till the day I graduated, Crystal House had always been my second home and Miss Crystal Bihar, my fairy godmother who made all my dreams come true. I met Crystal Ma'am for the first time when I was in grade 6. When I saw her, I was overwhelmed by the love and affection she had for all of us. Her exuberant smile and her warm hugs expressed the immense love she had towards all of us. I would like to say, Mom, you will be remembered as an inspirational woman and a caring mother for thousands of kids across the globe and you will live in our hearts forever. Good morning. My name is Akka Philander, Grid 8B. I would like to thank Ms. Crystal Dahan and her family for what they've done for me throughout the years that I've been at Crystal House South Africa. It's sad to see the mother of our home gone, but we as a family should make her proud and succeed. Thank you. My name is Christopher Kumar and I'm a graduate of the class of 2011 the first class of grade 12 to graduate from Crystal House India. I went on to complete my undergraduate degree in computer science and I've been working with HP for the past five years now. When I look back at my life, I thank God for one person who made me what I am today, Miss Crystal Dihan. Crystal ma'am and the wonderful school she set up, Crystal House India, gave me a chance in life. I got the best education possible that helps me to compete with the best today and not find myself wanting. More importantly, I learned strong human values from my school. I was taught to live by the core values of the school and I learned the importance of giving back to my family and my community. These are the values that Crystal Mam practice every day of our life and she was an inspiration to all of us. My sister, Angel, studied at Crystal House India and she'll be joining Crystal House India as the school counsellor. I got married recently and I live with my parents and my sister live with us in a nice apartment in a good residential area. We are ever grateful to Crystal Ma'am and Crystal House India for transforming our lives and for always being there for us in our times of need. Crystal House is not just a school, it's a home away from home, a strong support system and an extended family unit for all of us who studied there. I was one of the fortunate ones who saw Crystal Ma'am every year on her trip to India. She would always come to our classes and speak with us. Her immense love and affection for all of us was something that we cherished and we looked forward eagerly to our annual visit to the school. She left an indelible mark on all her children in Crystal House, India and her spirit will live on in every one of us. We promise that we will always remember her and take her legacy forward. Thank you. A big part of my job for the past 22 years has been writing for Crystal. And now I have to admit that I'm utterly incapable of finding words to describe what losing Crystal means to all of us who worked for her. She was larger than life in so many ways. If I could use only one word to describe Crystal Dahan, it would be excellence. This quality permeated every aspect of her life. This passion for excellence fueled the success of RCI and of Crystal House. It motivated her team, satisfied her clients, and excited her customers. Anyone who worked for her knew that to deliver anything less than your absolute best would be recognized in an instant, and you would be redirected with clarity. She was an excellent businesswoman, an excellent philanthropist, an excellent judge of character, of art, and of wine and this list could go on indefinitely. Crystal, my excellent colleague, 
my excellent mentor, my excellent friend. I will miss you always.